Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Huang Chen Unicorn. If this is your first time tuned into my program, I want to let you know that all the demos and data files in my program are free to download. You can find these files by clicking the link below the video. And if you are a returning viewer, I hope you have taken my advice and spent some time practicing the code we covered in our last episode. And just a kind reminder, this course is meant for educational purpose only. The data and information presented in this video is not investment advice, okay? And please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and click the bell icon on to receive the latest updates. Thank you. And today we are entering a new chapter. You must have heard of big data. The definition of big data is data that contains greater variety, arriving in increasing volumes and with more velocity. Put simply, big data is larger, more complex data sets, especially from uh, new data sources. These data sets are so voluminous that traditional data processing software just cannot manage them. But these massive volumes of data can be used to address business problems you wouldn't have been able to tackle before. The significance of big data has been extensively acknowledged in all facets of commercial enterprise, particularly within the realm of finance, where we possess an abundance of data. The consumer banking sector is witnessing a rapid proliferation of customer data, while a multitude of data is continuously being generated both online and offline, within the domain of exchanges. The challenge at hand is how to effectively harness this data. It is worth noting that financial market data differs from data in other fields, in that it is typically non-stationary and characterized by a high level of noise. Many statistical models have proven ineffective when applied to financial market data. Consequently, the evaluation of statistical models assumes even greater importance than their creation. Indeed, a model that performs well statistically does not necessarily translate into profitable outcomes. In the final module, we shall delve into a multiple linear regression, which is the most commonly employed prediction methodology. Through this module, we will illustrate how this basic mod model can be applied for successful stock trading. We will cover a range of topics, including a random variable associations, simple linear regression, assumptions pertinent to linear regression models and their validation, and the utilization of multiple linear regression models. Finally, we shall apply the models developed in our module to the trading of the highly popular ETF, SPY. Special emphasis will be placed on the consistency of model performance, as well as accurate evaluation methodologies. Upon completion of this module, you will be equipped to create your very own prediction models. Testing the efficacy of your models with historical data is sure to be a rewarding and enjoyable exercise. In our prior uh, module, our focus was solely upon single variables. However, in real-world scenarios, we often need to comprehend the relationships between two or more random variables. For instance, we may wish to determine if there is a correlation or pattern between the stock price fluctuations anticipated for the following days and the number of full days over the past five days.
Such researches are valuable and intriguing as they enable stock traders to make informed decisions regarding when to buy and sell. In this video, we shall explore the methodology utilized for measuring the strength of associations between two random variables. Consider the example of housing prices in Boston suburbs where variables such as um, percentage of low status population, proportion of non-retail business acres per town, nitric oxide concentrations, average number of rooms per dwelling, and median value of owner-occupied homes in $1,000 are used to gauge the value of a house. In statistics, Covariance is used to measure the strength of association between two variables. The formulas to calculate covariance are similar to those of sample variance, with sample covariance also being divided by degrees of freedom. If you are interested in the association between each pair of variables, you can use the Cove method of the data frame. However, the covariance value cannot indicate which pair has a stronger association. The reason is that covariance is influenced by the variances of both variables. Therefore, in order to obtain a measure only for the strength of association, we need to factorize the variances out, which yields the coefficient of correlation. As can be discerned from the correlation formula, the covariance term is normalized by dividing it with the standard deviation of both variables. <coughs> Consequently, the correlation coefficient will always lie between negative 1 and positive 1, irrespective of the variability of the two variables. This holds true even when there is no correlation between the variables, wherein the x-y pairs in the scatter plot would appear as a random variable, <coughs> oh, a random pattern, sorry. Conversely, when the correlation coefficient approaches positive 1, it indicates that x and y have a strong positive correlation, implying that an increase in x is likely to correspond to an increase in y. Similarly, a correlation coefficient close to negative 1 indicates a strong association between x and y, albeit in this case, as x increases, y is likely to decrease. It should be noted that there might exist nonlinear patterns between variables, which cannot be addressed by covariance and correlation measures as they only address linear patterns. So whenever we need to detect a possible nonlinear pattern, we can use the method scatter matrix from the tools plotting module of pandas. Scatter matrix shows all the pairwise relationships between the columns of your data. This function is closely modeled on pandas plotting scatter matrix. As you can see here, the scatter matrix is a matrix of scatter plots for each pair of, of random variables with histograms in diagonal positions corresponding to the variables. Upon examining the scatter matrix, we can see the RM exhibits a strong linear pattern with MEDV, which is the median value of the house. It is important to note that while scatter plots and correlation measures can identify the association between two variables, they cannot identify the association between one variable and multiple other variables. For this purpose, we need multiple linear regression. To illustrate linear regression models more clearly, we will begin with simple linear regression, which is an equation or formula built between two variables. In this case, 
we will seek to find the relationship between RM and MEDV, which appears to have a strong association based on the scatter matrix. The goal is to use RM to predict MEDV and apply the model in practice using historical data to enhance their value. All right, that concludes our content for today. I really hope you guys uh, got the hang of it. If you are feeling confused or frustrated about any of the code we showed in the program, please don't stress. I will go over the ins and outs of every line of code in the next episode. So we will get you up to speed in no time. And if any of the financial theories or statistic concepts we talked about are still a bit of a mystery to you, just drop me a comment. I am more than happy to help you out. And speaking of comments, I'm always open to your feedback and suggestions. So if you have got any thoughts on how we can make this program even better, please don't be shy about sharing them. Oh, and if you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel to stay updated on my latest videos. And if you have friends or family who would also appreciate the knowledge of building stock trading models in Python, please feel free to share my videos with them. I truly appreciate your support. And I'm excited to continue sharing more tutorials with you on my channel. Thank you again for your time. And I look forward to catching you all in the next episode. Goodbye.